So I'm going to be doing a time lapse today, and in this time lapse, I'm going to be using uh, a reference picture, uh, this normal mechanical pencil that I found. Uh, it's nothing special. Uh, this small eraser that I got from my local art store, and a kneaded eraser that I am holding upside down. So, yeah. I've been drawing probably since I've been around 10 years old, and since then it's been a roller coaster of improvement and disappointment. And in an artist's life, I think we all want to improve. Uh, so I thought I'd give you my tips on what to do to improve. So, my first tip would be to always use a reference. Well, not always, but most of the time, use a reference. Having something to reference your work off of can really help with pretty much everything to your proportions, anatomy, perspective. Because you can only remember so much from your everyday life. So if you're drawing a picture of something that you don't see necessarily in your everyday life, like an elephant or a giraffe or an elf, it's hard to recall it from memory, at least unless you have a photographic memory, which I don't think any of us do. So using a reference is definitely probably one of the biggest tips I can offer. Like in this video, I'm using a reference of a girl, or just a picture of a girl I found on Pinterest. Uh, I highly suggest using Pinterest. You could find pictures of like anything on Pinterest and you can create boards to like categorize. I just have a whole board dedicated to references. And something important to understand is that you're never going to get your picture to look exactly like the reference picture you're using. Uh, and that's not really the point. You, do, you don't want to just exactly copy a reference picture because that picture already exists. Um, you kind of want to make your own little spin to it. If you're practicing, copying it is fine, like I'm doing here. I didn't add the hands or anything in this picture because I just wanted to practice drawing the face. But you can choose whether or not you want to draw everything in the reference or not. Usually it's best not to, unless you're practicing. If you're drawing like a real piece, then you'd want to have many different references so you're not copying one picture, you're making your own original work of art. And remember, don't be hard on yourself if it doesn't look like the reference. I don't think any of us can make a picture or can copy something so exact to make it look exactly like the reference. The next tip I can offer is to learn realistic proportions. Uh, I started off drawing anime, which I think a lot of people did. Uh, as a child, they just was drawn towards the anime style because it's so pretty and whatnot. But I think I improved so much more when you first learn the realistic proportions of the head and the face and, and uh, body parts if you're focusing on uh, like humans, like drawing humans. Because once you learn the basics of realism, then you can push realism and you can change the proportions willingly and you can stylize your art based in reality. And that's important because if you're if you don't know realism first, well, you don't have to know like 100% realism. But if you don't know the proportions first and the anatomy, then you're not making. It's not a choice to draw a certain way you draw. Um, it's your drawings turn out that way just because you don't know how to draw any other way. When you know how to do it realistically already and you know the way they should look, you can purposely make a choice to change it. That's the difference between style and still needing to learn. I think a lot of beginners have a very similar style, especially in the, like, the anime community, uh, and that's not a bad thing. But I think it's mostly because they don't have a grasp on realistic proportions. I think even, like, the, especially the best, like, anime artists definitely know realistic proportions and so they can create beautiful, exaggerated proportions. Another thing that I started doing that I used to not do for like, probably like the f forever, I, I hadn't done it until like this year, is instead of just focusing on outlines, focus on shading. So start thinking about things in 3D as opposed to just 2D. Uh, I think that mostly comes from me starting out in an anime-ish kind of style, is that I would just draw the outlines of everything. And that's fine, and it's it looks good, um, or it can look good. 
but I never understood anything in like 3D space. When like people talked about like shading and where light and shadows were, I I never really got it because I never practiced. Like thinking of a face in 3D was really difficult to me. I used to just like shade the like the edges of the face like it was just a ball. Uh, but now with using references is probably the best way to learn how to shade because you can really see where the lights and darks hit someone's face and. Uh, Really pay attention to that, I would say. Pay attention to where the light is hitting your reference and why things are dark and why things are light. And really try to get um, a very large range of values. So values are basically how dark or how light or something are or is. So you want to get very uh, dark darks and light, light, like white lights. If not, your picture kind of it looks dull almost. I think that kind of happened in this picture because I blended too much. It kind of looked very smudgy in the end, but uh, you know, I still kind of like it that way. And I'm still practicing. I am definitely not a master by any means, but I know at least a little bit about drawing. Uh, where I don't think I'm a beginner anymore. I think I have some things to add to the drawing conversation. And. When you are shading, uh, I think it's important that you start light with, and then uh, just get darker and like add more and more uh, because you don't want to like start super dark right away uh, because then it's harder to take it back if you make a mistake. I like to think of it as you can keep adding with your pencil and you can keep taking away with the eraser. Uh, if you don't have a needed eraser, they're like a dollar at like any craft supplies like Michaels or what or anything you have near you. I really suggest getting them because they're really handy. You can basically knead them into whatever shape you want and you can press down on things and take uh, like color away so it's it lightens the area and it's really helpful and I do it a lot in this piece. Because uh, drawing like this is kind of like sculpting I like to think. Uh, because when you add the darkest parts, it pushes it away in space. And when you lighten something, it pulls it forward. Uh, so like the eye sockets are dark because the, the sockets are pushed back into the face. And the, the cheekbones are lighter because they stick out. And I, I like to think that way when I'm drawing. And of course, drawing a lot is going to help you more in your improvement. The more you draw, the better you get. Uh, I think everyone knows that. I don't think that's a secret, <laughs> um, but it is definitely true. That's why everyone repeats it so much. And But when you're drawing, uh, I think it's also important if you want to improve quickly, don't just like keep drawing, drawing, and like not look at your drawings afterwards and like don't think about them, just like pass them over. I think it's really important to look at your drawings and analyze them and not in a way where you're where you put yourself down or compare yourself to others kind of like to separate yourself from your drawing and to look at it analytically and see what you need to improve on and it's not a bad thing to need improvement because everyone needs improvement yeah it's very important to not rag on yourself to be like oh i'm so bad uh, I'll, I'll never improve because you will improve uh and keeping uh, your old once you look back on your old drawings in like a year you'll realize that you improve if you keep drawing you have to you have to make sure you keep drawing in order for that to happen if I were to look at this drawing analytically I would definitely say that I need work on the hair because for the hair I just basically scribbled in some darker pencil and and just smudged it I think uh, this whole piece is really smudgy and that's basically because I'm still still new to like drawing things in graphite and shading it. And so I don't really know how to use graphite that well, which is silly because I've been drawing with pencil for basically most of my life. But uh, again, uh, I drew an outline, so it, this is new to me. So definitely uh, I need to work on my technique with the mediums I use. Uh, but that's just going to come with uh, using it more and more and you can look up tutorials and stuff for that. I don't think I did a great job on my values. Um, I think the darkest parts weren't dark enough. Uh, I like the eyes. I, th I think the eyes are good. I think the eyes are like the only place that got like dark enough. And then the rest of her face I kind of got afraid. Because I got to a point where I, I went darker because I knew I should go darker. But I... 
like I got afraid and it didn't look right to me so I started smudging it away and that just made the whole face look muddy and I also think that I should have included the hands uh, even though I was working on just the the face part uh, I think the hands scared me away because uh, I was going to include them but then I just last second decided not to because they scared me and but the only way they're not going to scare me is if I practice them and draw them. Another thing, I know just the jawline's a little off from the picture, but you know, that's that's okay. Like, uh, I'm not upset with this drawing, I actually kind of like it and, well, I, I do like it. It's just that you're your own worst critic when it comes to your own artwork. But looking at this kind of stuff with like a third party kind of view, where you're not judging yourself, you're just judging the artwork, can be really, really beneficial so you know what to work on next time and to not make the same mistakes. If you don't look at your art in this kind of way, you, you end up making the same mistakes over and over again. Uh, and then you're wondering, why am I not improving? It's because you don't know what you need to improve on. So again, I'll just recap that using references, messing up, just it's okay if your references don't look, or if your picture doesn't look like your reference. Uh, trying to learn how to draw realistic proportions learning how to shade, drawing a lot, but looking at your drawings analytically is really important. And you know, just, just keep going at it, you'll get there. It takes people a very long time to get good at art, because it's a very difficult skill to learn, I think. So this is about what the finished piece looks like. Uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, there are a couple things I could improve on. But I hope you liked the video, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I hope you have a great day, and stay tuned for more videos uh, coming out from me. <laughs> okay, bye.